Hi, Mark here. I thought I'd just do a very quick demo of the new Azure Functions tooling that's available for Visual Studio 2017. It's been quite recently released. And part of the reason for doing this is some of you may know I've got a plural site course on Azure Functions called Azure Functions Fundamentals. And I've actually released another plural site course recently, uh, Building Serverless Applications in Azure. And both of these courses I show how to create Azure Functions, but um, they both came out before the new Visual Studio tooling was available. So I thought I would just show how that works. So what I've got here is, if I just go to help about, you'll see I've got Visual Studio uh, 2017, it's version 15.3. Um, this tooling became available with 15.3 and when you install it you also need to make sure that you've got the uh, relevant extensions. Um, I always make sure I've got Cloud Explorer for Visual Studio 2017 if I'm doing any Azure development but this is the key one Azure Functions and Web Job Tools and when you've installed this you'll be able to access the built-in tooling for Azure Functions. Now it prompted me automatically to install these I think that's because I'd selected these Azure workload but if you haven't got that then you can just use the Visual Studio uh, installation tool and this extensions dialog to make sure you've got all of these bits that you need. So once you've got all of that installed you just go to file new project and under Visual C Sharp cloud you'll see an Azure Functions option and so I'm just going to put this in D drive and it's just going to call it function app 2 that's absolutely fine I'll say OK to that and if we have a look at the solution explorer if I just pin this open it's created me a completely empty function app it's just got a empty host JSON and an empty local settings file. So there's nothing in here at all, no functions yet. Um, how do we add a function? Well, quite simply, just right click, add, new item, and it's actually appeared nice uh, and conveniently right at the top of the dialog here. An Azure function, this is part of the tooling, so I can give my um, function a name. Function one is absolutely fine just for this quick demo. So I'll say add. And it's going to give me a selection of a choice um, of templates. And if you've used the portal to create Azure Functions, you'll be familiar with all of these. Some of them have got different settings that you can um, set up to do with the triggers and inputs and outputs. I'm just going to select a generic webhook for this example because it's nice and simple. It's not really got any parameters. I'll say OK. And there you can see function one dot C sharp. Now one of the uh, slight differences that you won't have come across if you've just been using the portal and the old um, CSX approach is that now we're using these um, attributes on our um, C sharp classes that give us information like what's the name of the function it's called function one and what's it triggered from it's a HTTP trigger with the uh, generic JSON type of um, webhook and if I were to F12 if I were to F12 on one of these um, then we'd be able to see that there's also I could also configure the root the methods that you're allowed to use uh, the authorization level and so on for this function and it's given us some fairly basic um, example code it's going to log the fact that the webhook was triggered it's going to read the body of the um, HTTP request as JSON and then it's going to check for first and last properties and so this function is going to require a HTTP post um, with an object that's got these properties and if it doesn't then we're just going to get bad request and if it does it will say hello um, to the first and last name so how can we test this? Well, if I click run, what it's actually going to do is it's going to use the local Azure Functions tooling. Um, I think it will prompt you to install it if you don't have it installed at this point. It's appeared on another monitor, so I'll just drag it across here. And you can see here it's starting up, it's listening on um, localhost, and it's worked out um, 
that I've got one function and it's given me the URL to call to call that function. So if I copy that and let's get postman up and we need to do a post to that URL and in the body we need to provide some JSON that had a first and a last property and let's send that and that looks like that's worked well you can see down the bottom we've got a greeting hello Mark Heath um, you can see here in the output from the CLI um, details of this request um, you can see here actually where the function CLI is installed it's just running func.exe of uh, version 1 of the of the local Azure Functions CLI um, you may be familiar with using this if you've done any Azure Functions development locally before. Um, it's a very convenient way of testing your functions before you deploy them. So let's just stop this. And um, obviously one of the advantages of using Visual Studio is I've got a very nice right-click uh, publish option. So if I right-click click and publish, it will give me the option to publish this to an Azure Function app either a brand new one or an existing one. So if I say publish, it will allow me to choose what subscription I want to use, um, what resource group, what app service plan I want to use, either create a new one or um, use an existing one. Um, same with storage accounts. Um, but I'm not actually gonna do this at the moment. What I wanted to show you instead was what actually gets created on the disk when you create functions using this technique because it's slightly different from the old CSX approach. So if I just open the containing folder, again I'll drag this window across and we look into the bin folder and navigate in here. Here we can see what essentially would get published if we were publishing this function. And so here in the function um, one folder, there's a function.json file that's been created for us. Um, notice we don't actually have that file in um, our solution. It's, it's automatically worked this out. So let's have a look at what's inside that. Just look at it in Notepad. And you can see it's auto generated. It's got details of the function binding. And then it's got details of where is the DLL that's actually got the definition for this function and what is the entry point that it needs to run. So it's auto generated this. You don't have to worry about the syntax of this file. So where is that DLL? Well, you can see if we look in this bin folder, then we've got a whole bunch of dependencies, but somewhere in here, we should see there it is function app 2.dll that actually contains the code for our function. And so if you wanted to deploy this yourself, you would just be able to copy all of this, um, the function one folder and the bin folder up onto your Azure app service. Your host.json file is of course exactly the same as it always was. There's nothing configured in here, uh, but you can use it to set overall settings for your function app. So hopefully that gives you a very quick idea of the new tooling that's available in Visual Studio. In fact, before I finish, let me show you one last thing uh, that's worth seeing. And that's the fact that you can uh, put your own breakpoints in here. So let's put a couple of breakpoints in. We'll run our function up, app up again. We'll get um, Postman across again. And let's just send. And as you can see, we jump. And what I was showing you before I accidentally interrupted myself because my screen recorder program has the same keyboard shortcut as Visual Studio was that we can step through. So I'll have to use these little icons to just step over and we can see the values. Let's step over again. We, could, we should be able to see the values of various properties of our data objects. It's probably not giving me a tooltip because this is a dynamic object, uh, but there we are. Uh, first name is Mark, last name Heath. Um, so all the usual debugging behavior that you expect to have in Visual Studio is available to you, which is really nice.